The late 1890s and early part of the 20th century were characterized by rapid industrialization, with a huge growth in low-wage factory jobs. And these factories were incredibly unsafe. Employees working with dangerous chemicals could expect to come home covered in them, and people were even locked into their places of work. And these jobs came with illnesses and conditions that were considered unavoidable occupational risks. But if you wanted your children to eat, you'd take those risks. Enter Dr. Alice Hamilton, who asked, how can we mitigate those risks to keep people safe and healthy at work? Alice Hamilton was born in 1869, which you may recognize as a time with very few women represented in medicine. But Alice had made up her mind when she was a teenager that that's what she wanted to do. So after taking lots of extra anatomy classes and sweet-talking her father into letting her go, she enrolled at University of Michigan's medical school and got her MD. After doing her residencies, she decided that she'd rather do research than open a practice, so she went to Germany to study bacteriology. And there, she had to agree to make herself invisible in order to attend lectures, a process involving a lot of sneaking into seats that were carefully hidden in the backs of lecture halls. And after coming back to the U.S., she lived and worked at Chicago's Hall House, a so-called social settlement where recent immigrants could receive services like healthcare and language classes. Alice ended up treating many of the members of the community for injuries and conditions they sustained on the job. She credited her time at Hall House as one of the main reasons she started researching what were then called industrial diseases. So she turned her medical and scientific training to the issue of making these workplaces safer, starting with her own. In 1905, she published a paper on the transmission of scarlet fever and similar diseases in hospital settings, and made some findings that are especially salient today. She had a group of patients with scarlet fever cough, cry, and breathe over a set of petri dishes, and then incubated the samples to see if Streptococcus pyogenes, the microbe that causes scarlet fever, was present. Which it absolutely was, and she found that the best way to block it was to simply cover the mouth and nose, because the vector for the disease appeared to be saliva and respiratory droplets. So she recommended that surgeons always wear masks when performing surgery, because you could have scarlet fever but have yet to show symptoms. This was a really important move in occupational safety for hospital workers, but the results held true for any disease where respiratory droplets can be a vector, making these findings monumental for public health. Among other research, her work is why mask wearing caught on as a way to reduce the spread of disease, first during the 1918 Spanish flu, and more recently with things like SARS, MERS, and well, COVID-19. While some of her early work was studying respiratory diseases, Alice would really make a name for herself when it came to industrial toxins. She was hired to investigate lead, first by the state of Illinois and later by the U.S. Department of Labor. Because lead was cheap and really easy to work with, it was used in just about everything, like pipes, foil, and paint. And the thing is, people already knew lead was toxic. They just didn't understand how. We now believe that lead is poisonous because the body mistakes it for calcium, which the body uses for bones and teeth, and in lots of cell signaling pathways controlling muscle and neuron function. This means that lead concentrates in bones and teeth, in nerves, and in the brain. And when lead deposits in bone rather than immediately gumming up the works in your brain and muscles, then you've got a super fun lead reserve in your body that can be slowly released long after exposure. So at the time Alice Hamilton was beginning her research, you'd see a wide variety of symptoms in folks who worked with lead, and the onset and development of those symptoms didn't always coincide with exposure, which made it difficult to pin down lead as the source of these illnesses. And the owners of these factories were perfectly happy with that, blaming symptoms on alcohol use or poor hygiene. But Dr. Hamilton proved them both wrong and very liable. In order to gather her data, she basically had to become an investigative reporter. She'd slip into factories without the owner's permission because the owners regularly lied about how much lead they were using and how they used it. She'd also take factory workers and union leaders out for beers so they could speak freely, and had workers sneak her samples of materials so she she could test them for lead. And she discovered over 70 industrial processes through which workers were being poisoned and killed, leading to major safety overhauls in the lead industry, as well as the replacement of lead in stuff like paint and foil. Her work made her the expert in occupational health. So when Harvard began their industrial hygiene program, they hired her on as an assistant professor. She never got tenure, you can maybe guess why, but she did negotiate for half of every year off to continue her field work. And it's because of her efforts that the United States has organizations like OSHA and NIOSH, which create guidelines for workplace safety and continue to research workplace health hazards. So thanks to Alice Hamilton's ingenious scientific mind and unparalleled awesomeness, 
the world is a much safer place. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, and thanks to our patrons for helping make it happen. We really enjoy being able to bring you these stories about awesome overlooked figures from history like this, and it's your support that makes it possible. So if you'd like to get involved, check out patreon.com slash scishow.